All right, playing Kevin's fish. <laughs> Pike. Oh, you're cutting the top off first. Yep. I haven't seen that one yet. You cut right down to the fin at the back. When you fry it up, these bones in here, that are, you won't even notice them. They just, they're so soft so and small. It's not an issue. And then you can see what, what I refer to as the Y bone. And that's what everyone complains about. So you just find those. Make your incision and let kind of develop the feel. And then when you get about this part, you can drop it down and as you would any other fish. Now, of course, if you wish, you can explore the stomach to see what they're feeding on. Not a lot. You can actually poach that in to make a really nice stew and then the meat just falls off the bones, but that's if fish are scarce. We're not doing too badly, so I usually break it up into bite-sized pieces for the, the gulls. Makes sense that it wasn't, uh, hadn't fed a lot because the, they weren't biting until the weather changed, so. Now all of a sudden we're finding them to be a bit more feisty. And what I like about pike is um, for a fish, you really maximize the, when you do it, the amount of meat that you can use. Like this one fish will, could feed four people. It's pretty tasty. Yes. I love it. I will take you know, if I'm going to eat fish, I'll, I mean, walleye, of course, is a wonderful fish. But, uh, personally, I'll, knowing how kind of rare they seem to be in most waters, I'll keep pike over walleye. If these just seem to be more plentiful. I'll turn that into eight pieces to, uh, fry up. And you're laughing. One big fish. Eight full of eight pieces of fish. Done. And uh, I don't know how that happened. I caught the fish and you cleaned it. So. Um, because I know how to do this, you would have butchered it. So. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Plain and simple. Thanks a lot. All right. <laughs>